What's going on, everybody? This is Steven here with Gate City Sports Channel. And uh, look, today I just want to do something a little different, guys. Um, I could break down film for you guys, but I got a feeling that many of you guys are going to be spending time with your family. And, you know, it's going to be a little difficult for y'all to watch that, that type of content, especially something that's as heavy as film breakdown. So I decided to just lean into the holiday season, guys. All right, Joe. We're talking top 10 Christmas movies. Let's have a little agreement and a little disagreement. All right. Let's get it. What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Steven Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whenever it is you get around to watching this. Once again, guys, my name is Steven Heider, and this is Gate City Sports Channel. All right, y'all, top 10 Christmas movies. Look, we're never going to try to, we're never going to come to an agreement on every movie, every single movie. Some of you guys are going to have, take exception to what I consider to be Christmas movies. We already get that, but I tried to mix it in with some of the things that are maybe not traditional Christmas movies, but take place around the Christmas. I tried to mix it in with some of the animated kind of stuff, and I tried to mix it in with some of the old school, like traditional things. No matter how I tried to fit this list, man, you just can't fit everything that is that, you know, that that is like the top tier movies. You just can't fit them all in there. So this is the way I approached it. I approached this simply put in this manner, guys. I went through what are the 10 movies I enjoy watching the most, basically that 10 day window or so before Christmas. You know, that, you know, two, three weeks out where you start watching, you know, Christmas movies. And I got to be honest with you. The first one's not going to be a shocker. Everyone puts this on their list. It's no longer like a shock value. But it's just, it's one of the greatest action films in American history. Come on, bro. I'm talking John McClane in Die Hard. I, I know that that one's like, oh, come on, man. It, it, it's, you know, loosely related. You know, he's trying to travel back for Christmas. But the way I look at it is, is that every Christmas, like, it, it's a tradition for me to watch Die Hard. Like, I love the movie. It's one of the few, like, Bruce Willis movies that I really do like a lot. And it's got that iconic scene. Like, everyone knows the iconic scene that's in that movie. So, yeah, I mean, to me, Die Hard, I gotta put it there. That's my number 10, guys. And I know some of y'all are gonna be like, come on, man. But Die Hard, number 10 for me. I got invited to the Christmas party by mistake. Who knew? Number 9. This is a really, really classic movie. Uh, only a certain age demographic here is probably even going to recognize this movie. And if you grew up in the 80s or you grew up in the early 90s, you'll know this movie. My number nine Christmas movie, it's Gremlins. Look, Steven Spielberg directed, like, how can you not like Gremlins? Like, for real, like, Gremlins is just one of those classic movies. We all remember the classic line, don't expose them to light. Uh, don't ever get them wet. <laughs> Whatever you do. Don't feed them past midnight. Come on, man. Gremlins is just like an iconic classic film. Like, it doesn't get much better than Gremlins for me. It's definitely in my top 10. It's something I love to watch. I don't always get to that movie every single year, but I definitely enjoy it. And I normally do watch it around the holiday season. So, yeah, Gremlins is definitely like one of my top, definitely one of my top 10. I'm going to put it at number nine for me. Never, never let them eat after midnight number eight i love a good horror film i do i love horror films i love action films and i'm a huge fan of comedy i love the fact that this is based off of an old german tradition and yeah it's hollywood up <laughs> you know to make it seem a little more you know a little more you know adventurous if you will or, or scary or horror based but krampus number eight for me is krampus like it's a really good horror film. And, I mean, it definitely, like, a lot of these do have, like, themes to them that come around, like, consumerism and things like that. But Krampus, man, I mean, just the idea of there being this this good and this bad ancient tradition and they worked together to where, you know, our tradition says, oh, you, you better not make the naughty list. But the German tradition back in the day was if you made the naughty list, something really bad could happen. Krampus, man. Got, got to take that as number eight for me. St. Nicholas is not coming this year. In 
instead a much darker ancient spirit. Number seven. This is one of those movies I think doesn't get the credit it deserves. And I'm not a huge fan of Tim Allen, but his portrayal in the Santa Claus, it's up there for me, man. I thought that was one of the best holiday films. I'm not a big Tim Allen guy, but the Santa Claus to me, yeah, man, it's, it's in my top ten. I love watching that. I love watching that with my niece and everybody. Like, it's it's a good, fun Christmas movie. I don't buy into this Santa Claus thing. And there would be millions of disappointed children around the world. All right. Number six. Number six can be a little controversial just because, like, you can lean either way with these movies. I'm going to go Home Alone, but more specifically, I'm going to go Home Alone 2, Lost in New York. The original Home Alone is excellent. I love that movie. I watch it constantly all the time, too, around the holiday season. I mean, I could definitely understand if some people wanted to swap Home Alone for Home Alone 2. But for me, Home Alone 2 just has that really iconic scene in the hotel, you know, with the, I trust you, but my Tommy gun doesn't. Like, Home Alone 2, I mean, you got, like, the, you know, the kind of like going back to like FAO Schwartz and stuff like that. Like to me, Home Alone 2 just kind of really more encompasses more of the Christmas theme to me than Home Alone does, although they're both clearly Christmas movies. So for me, my number six movie just outside of my top five would be Home Alone 2. Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. Moving into my top five. All right, I'm going to start off with something very controversial with my top five. Okay, there are a million different Christmas carols, okay? You can go with, uh, you know, the Muppet Christmas Carol with Michael Caine. I, I, some of y'all don't know Michael Caine. He's a huge actor, but uh, just think of, like, uh, he played um, he played the butler, Mr. Alfred, in the Batman series um, on the Dark Knight Rises series of, the, of those. Um, you also have Bill Murray Scrooged. I mean, that's definitely one, but I didn't go with either of those movies. And I know that some people are going to take offense to that because those two movies are very, very popular around the idea of Ebenezer Scrooge and A Christmas Carol. But I went with something a little more in depth. You guys got to remember, I, you know, I studied history in college, guys. Like, I taught social studies. Like, I really enjoy the story, the narrative of things. So, Hulu actually came out a couple of years ago. This was a few years ago, but they came out with this one that was called The Man Who Invented Christmas. And it was really the story behind how Charles Dickinson came up with the idea for a Christmas carol. And like it goes through like the whole history of it and like what was happening. Like it's definitely a really good movie. I know it's controversial. I know some people are like, oh come on, man. Like out of all of them, that's the one. But for me, that's the one that does it for me. That's my number five. Get the name right and the character will appear. Scratch. Scrounger. Scrooge. Number four. All right, I got to go a little bit into anime here, and I, this is a this is one I personally like. I, I mean, I understand that people wanted to swap out with different ones, but I really love a Charlie Brown Christmas. Um, it's definitely got that little weird spiritual narrative to it. I get it, guys, but I, I like it. I mean, that was always like one of the big, you know, Christmas movies we watched as a kid. I definitely can see subbing in something like um, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, the 1964 version of that, like. I think that definitely hits home. I think that's a, a, a good one as well, but I just prefer Charlie Brown Christmas to that one. So Charlie Brown Christmas, to me, my number four Christmas movie. Linus is right. I won't let all this commercialism ruin my Christmas. Number three. This is one of those classic ones. Uh, this is a late 80s movie. Chevy Chase, probably not the nicest guy in the world, but I mean, he was a good actor. He was a funny guy. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. As I get older, and the role of Christmas changes as, you know, you, you get older, everyone knows this, um, I can relate more to the character, right? The, the Griswolds. I can, I can relate to that. Like, um, I love the movie. It's a funny movie. And it's, it's to me, it's, it's definitely a classic. But I'm going to tell you, some of you guys are going to take offense to me putting that on there and maybe leaving out some of the more classic films, and we'll get to that at the end of this. But to me, that's my number three. Number two, to me, Christmas is not Christmas until I see this particular short series. This is the 1967 version of Dr. Zeus's 
How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Look, the Jim Carrey version is really good and all that stuff, guys. Don't get me wrong, but I just got to go with the classic here, man. I mean, it just, for me as a kid growing up, like, that meant Christmas. Like, I remember it used to be like, it felt like every, like, maybe it was Black Friday we would watch it or it was like the night of, of um, Thanksgiving. That always came on cable television. I know some of you like cable television because you're young, but it always came on cable television. It was like a huge thing to, to like sit down and watch it. Like to me, it always kind of really stamped it was Christmas. Like the Christmas season is on now. That's my number two movie, guys. Like I love it. It's one of my favorites. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. Number one. Look. A lot of big classic films to pick from here, but there's only one that really like makes you reflect on your life, makes you grateful for the things you have, and to be honest, for guys like man, it's a bit of a tearjerker, man, and it's it's crazy, but I got to put it up there, man. It's James Stewart. It's a Wonderful Life. I never knew who James Stewart was until I watched this film, and then like I started like kind of going down his discography, and then I realized that James Stewart was actually a really good actor. But I gotta be honest with you, this might be controversial to say. I feel like this might have been James Stewart's best role. Like, I, this is just an iconic Christmas movie to me. This is my favorite Christmas movie. I understand that getting into to some of it, some people are going to really disagree with the order and the way I have things, but this is my personal preferences, guys. You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. I'll give you the moon, all right? I'll take it. Then what? All right. Let's talk about some of the things that got left off. All right. Yes, Amir Cohen, 34th Street, the original, um, the 40s version of it. I can't remember the exact year it was released, but yeah, of course. Like, that's a, that's a big one. I know people love that one. I mean, they remade it again in the 90s because it was so popular. It doesn't do it for me, guys. I, I mean... I think that's more of like my parents' generation or even my grandparents' generation. Like it just it doesn't it doesn't really do it for me personally. Um, a Christmas story, absolutely a classic. My brother loves a Christmas story. Shoot your eye out. Oh no, it was the classic mother BB gun block. It just didn't make my list. Like it's all on every Christmas. It's definitely one of the major hitters. It just, you know, I, I don't personally I'm not a huge fan of it, but I know other people they, they really do like that one, so I get it. But for me, those two are probably the two bigger ones that you could say that really got left off of my list. But, you know, then you could kind of maybe mix in, like, I don't know. You can mix in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Like, of course, that's an iconic one as well. Um, they just didn't make my list, man. They, they didn't make my list at all because they're not the ones I enjoy. But I want to know, what are yours? Tell me your top ten, man. What are y'all's top ten Christmas movies? What's your number one, guys? I'm interested to see what your number one is. For me, it's a, it's a wonderful life. It's it's clearly my number one. But hey, everyone's different. Interested in what y'all's you know your traditions, the movies you guys watch. It's pretty cool. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. See y'all uh, soon. We'll we'll start doing some film breakdown following this, guys. But just want to do a little Christmas theme one today. So all right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here.